often, well, yeah. How often do you time. find yourself progress, procrastinating when you really need to get something done? Well, today we want to get into the root of why we procrastinate so we can get focused and achieve all the things that we need and want to do. All right, joining us live this morning is Dr. Thea Gallagher. She's a clinical psychologist and associate professor with NYU Langone Health. Dr. Gallagher, thanks for joining us today and not hesitating. I like the fact that you, you jumped right in with us. Good morning. Yeah, thanks How for having you? me. So, Dr. Gallagher, why do we procrastinate and what is the psychology behind all of this? So sometimes we procrastinate because we get really overwhelmed by the task at hand. Um, and then the bigger it gets, and then we think, oh gosh, I have to like go clean up my entire room and that's gonna be a four hour process. And, and like, who doesn't wanna put that kind of a thing off? So there can be a, a correlation between feeling overwhelmed. And then another reason why we procrastinate is some of us are perfectionists. And so we know when we go to do something, we're gonna take longer than we probably should at it, or we're gonna do extensive research. And again, it comes back to feeling really overwhelmed and then putting it off um, and not doing it, but it actually adds more stress to our life in the long run. Now, people use this, they, they claim anyway, what about the person who waits until the last second because they perform so much better when they work under pressure like that? Is there more to that? That meets the eye? Yeah. You know, so I think it's kind of a trick that our mind plays on us because a lot of times when we are like, you know, down to the wire, we feel that level of motivation and we do get things done. And then there's, we're really reinforced because we got it done right at the deadline. And we're like all like, ah, you know, excited about the fact that that happened. But what people aren't considering is the fact that they were stressed about it mm. weeks leading up to it, or it was hanging over their head, or they kept thinking about it. And so we are in a way reinforced for procrastinating because we feel really good when we finally get it done, but we're not considering all the stress and anxiety that it caused us on the front end. And most people would say, if they actually kind of pace things out, they do feel better in the long run as well. I, I wonder about this, because I'm going through this with my 16 year old son, which it's a whole other well. level with a teenager, <laughs> but I am trying to get him to take his permit test. And for him, I know that if he doesn't have a specific deadline, he will continue putting it off and putting it mm. off. What can I do to help him stop procrastinating and just finally get this, this test over and done with? Because I, I need another driver in the house because I'm tired of being the show. So you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it is. We do need deadlines. And I think you don't need like the deadlines do motivate us because we have, if we have no timeline, then like we could put things off forever. So I think having a deadline is important. So it's hard when there isn't one already, but trying to create one, but you can also incentivize your behavior and you can incentivize other people's behavior. Like, Hey, if you take your permit test by thus and such time, you, this, you can earn this benefit or, mm -hmm. you know, then we can start looking at cars or we, you know, you can kind of get this reward. So I think sometimes we do have to incentivize our behavior because um, motivation as all of us can relate to it. It can be hard to tap into sometimes. And so to incentivize our behavior with rewards along the way can be really important and to create some deadlines um, so that we can actually get things done. Yeah, I've found that sometimes instead of looking at the big picture of what has to get done, I end up like writing it in a notebook, just mm. one step at a time, Break which day I want it done. And this crossing it off is such a feeling of accomplishment and you watch that list get Same. shorter and shorter. <laughs> that's, that's how I sort of got out of it. Is that, is that okay to do? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's about making small, manageable goals, you know, saying I'm going to clean my room for 10 minutes today. Um, and that's almost sounds comical, like, oh, that's like no time at all. But what happens is that you do it, you feel some level of accomplishment, you feel more motivated. And sometimes that motivation can turn into momentum, and then you actually do more. Um, but sometimes it can be really good to even feel like, okay, I did check that off, I, I cleaned up and I made some progress in that 10 minutes. That's impressive. So it's really a lot of ways like tricking our brain to, to get things done. But in the long run, it really will help with, um, you know, managing this anxiety because when things hang over our head for a long time, um, it can it can really take a toll on us in the long term. Do Dr. Gallagher, how does social media and the very design of it, all I do is this, I'm on Instagram, all I have to do is flick my thumb. I have to believe that that figures some way into the overwhelming feeling of anxiety, which then transfers into procrastination getting the job done. Your thoughts on this? 
Well, you know, social media, we could we could talk about this in so many different angles and ways, but I do think what I've seen people use it for with regard to procrastination is kind of avoiding what you have to do, right? I have to clean my room. I'm just going to go like check Instagram real quick and then I'm lost in the right. Instagram hole for an hour or two. So I, I would say that I think it can become like a distraction and something that we can do and there's immediacy to it. There is, again, kind of a reinforcing cycle if we have likes or if we kind of see content that's interesting to us, but it can be, you know, it can be something that we use to avoid. But I actually have used social media in a way for people as a reinforcer, as a positive reward. Oh. So like, hey, I'm going to clean my room for 20 minutes and then I'll look at um, Instagram for five minutes. Mm. And so almost using it, if you like it and you like how you feel when you're using it, almost use it as a reward system and don't have it just be something that you have access to at all times of the day because then it will lose that that character quality as well i see, like that see but i get stressed from it because i feel like there are people expecting me to comment on this picture and that post and this oh. and that and so and then when i don't do that I, i'll go back to it later it's like it's a oh, mess you gotta pay i'm a mess she's she's small fee <laughs> just a copay there you go <laughs> Gold hand. i care listen. less that's what you gotta do you Ex just gotta care less and you know do you exactly <laughs> I like that. dr gallagher you. thank you so much for joining thank us you. Oh, is a wealth of information. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks so much. Stay well, thanks.